can answer that. <laughs> so um, <laughs> depends where you want to go. Um, uh, a B2 bomber costs about $2 billion. So how many B2 bombers do you need to guarantee the safety of a country? And uh, we, so it's really a matter of- You ordered 46. There you go. <laughs> That's a lot of particle accelerators right there. So I think that uh, it's, yes, science does become more expensive as, as we go by, just because the technology becomes more complex and, and bigger. And, and, but that does not mean that we should stop asking these questions, because for sure, if we stop asking these questions, we'll stagnate, one, as a species, and we won't be able to build a B3 bomber. Mm. Just to add to that also, we have to remember that there is also a lot of science you can do without building CERN or, or very expensive facilities. Sure. For example, there was a recent Nobel Prize for the discovery of graphene, a single layer of carbon. When Gaim discovered this, he had very, very expensive lab equipment. Right? He had a lead pencil and scotch tape. That's it. So I'm, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the point. CERN, what, now what is the biggest societal impact of that, and was that worth it? And now you know the answer, but don't give it away right away. So um, there were all these physicists that went to Geneva, and they took data, but they had to go home and teach. They had to go home to their families, and they still wanted to see that data. Well, so a computer scientist named Tim Berners-Lee did something absolutely brilliant, and he created the World Wide Web. So that $10 billion, actually at that point it was less, that went into CERN, was that worth it? Has that, has, has that changed your life? Yes. I challenge you to go through a day without it. <laughs> <laughs> so now, there's another question uh, that, that comes out of this question, which is, are we at the point in science, especially in physics, where we need all of this technology? We need the, I mean, despite the example that you just gave, but I mean, for the big conceptual breakthroughs, have we left the era where the Einstein, the, you know, the solitary genius could, you know, totally revolutionize our thinking just this, just, you know, within this one man's head? No, I don't think so. Yeah, we, we need them. Uh, yeah, we need them. You can still have theorists, which are sort of lone wolves, that come up with great ideas, but then you have to test them. <laughs> dark, dark energy might need this. The theory of right. everything might, might need someone of this right. caliber. So it's different, right? Because the difference being that when Einstein came up with his theory a hundred years ago, the tests for the theory, at least you know, the bending of starlight, just took a bunch of astronomers and some telescopes, and it didn't take billions of dollars. Now. You know, if you come up with some revolutionary theory, my in, in fundamental science, meaning very high energy physics or something like that, probably we will take big equipment or some very precise underground detectors <laughs> to, 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 to find that. And that is sort of inevitable. Oh, they're actually yeah. cheap. The entire U.S. budget until recently was $2 million a year for so dark matter goes. experiments. So some yeah. fundamental cheap. research is not yeah. expensive, right? Yeah, and I mean, the entire... American budget from the National Science Foundation for all of physics and throw in math too for good measure mm -hmm. is four stealth bomb, four of those bombers per right. year. So I think the most important yeah. piece of lab equipment actually we need to invest in for this is our children. Yeah. Because we, I, I agree there's plenty of a role for brilliant minds to come and, and, and do things. And I, I think especially it's some, your daughters. Yeah, yes, <laughs> high five. <laughs> and uh, and uh, because of that, it's there wonderful that New York Academy of Science is doing its share to get people fired up about science, yeah. get our kids fired up about science. We live in a, society, in a country right now where 46% of the population in a recent poll think that our universe is less than, and Earth is less than 10,000 years old. Now, that is not the kind of thing our daughters need to hear, in, especially not from their school teachers, you know, when we want to inspire them to go and and do science. We live in a, also in a society where it's very fashionable for whenever some scientists say something which, the, which some powerful person doesn't want to hear, they just dismiss the science and say the scientists are losers. And, and, and um, that's also not something we want our daughters to hear and, or our sons if we want to inspire them to go and be the people who are going to solve dark energy in the future. So let's keep inspiring our kids. <laughs>